Hey everyone, uh, before we get into this video, I'm going to remind you, we have a giveaway going on right now for $100 cash money. All you got to do is go down to the description or the pinned comment to find out how to enter. Now, let's get into this video a bit. Um, I, you know, I haven't been making videos the last few days. I was on a mini vacation with my children and all that over the weekend. Um, wanted them to have a good time. Uh, we we're fully vaccinated in this house now, so uh, we feel a bit more free to go on little vacations like we did this weekend. But what's interesting is that we are uh, looking at what videos to make for my channel. And I, I, I usually cover news uh, or rumors. Uh, sometimes I'll have a nice discussion piece. And I had a few ideas rolling around, and I do have some upcoming videos on um, some gaming accessories and hardware here, uh, hopefully by next month. But I actually wanted to take a look at this interesting thing Nintendo is doing uh, with Xenoblade Chronicles 2. So Xenoblade Chronicles 2 came out way back in 2017. Uh, the excellent Torna DLC, which was even more visually impressive than the original game and ran better, and was just jam-packed full of content, came out in 2018. And to date is the most popular Xenoblade Chronicles game ever. It's, it's, it's over 1.5 million in sales. We haven't really seen a big sales update on it since. Maybe it's hit 2 million. Um, it's hard to know. Uh, but it was the most popular Xenoblade Chronicles game ever. And we recently got Pyra and Mithra added to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which, for those who don't know, who didn't pay any attention, those are characters specifically, or really a dual personality character uh, from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Now, what Nintendo did is something that, that, that probably was to push digital sales, maybe. Uh, but it's had an interesting effect. So Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is reportedly not only sold out worldwide. I mean, that's just the way it is. You might be able to find a, a, a rare local retailer right now that has a copy. Uh, and if you do, get it. And if you can find a physical copy of the Torna one, the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 with the Torna DLC... Buy it now. If you can find it at any of your local stores, buy it right now. I'm telling you this. MSRP price, buy it now. Because according to pricecharting.com, which tracks um, you know, it, it, it tracks various uh, video games and, and, and gives you their pricings. It also does trading cards and, and other things, figurines, etc. Uh, but basically it tracks collectibles. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has gone out of print. So, because Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 with the Torna DLC has gone out of print, prices have shot up. The loose sale price right now for the standard edition physical copy of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is right around $90. The complete price is at $108.45. Brand new, sealed, all that jazz, $140.48. Yeah. Now, you might be able to find it used. Um, I, I think uh, so, so certain GameStops might have a few used copies hanging around. Although, since the Torna, Torna DLC came out, yeah, good luck with that. Uh, but when you look at Amazon, eBay, and all that, the price is shooting up because you cannot find this game anymore. And there aren't any new shipments coming. It is, as far as we're aware, Nintendo is not printing any more of these physical copies. Now, when you talk about the Torna version, when you got the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 with the Torna DLC physical, which there's even less of those than there are of the original Xenoblade Chronicles 2 out there, the loose price for that is $101. The complete price is $135.98, and new price is $176.35. Now, loose price for those wondering are basically if you just have the cartridge, but you do not have the box art. So if you're wondering, like, what the heck's the difference between the loose price and the complete price? Loose price is literally if you just have the physical cart, but you no longer have the box, they'll pay that just for the cart. If you have the the box with the cart, which is what the complete price is, that's when you get the higher price there. And obviously, if you have a sealed copy that's brand spanking new, that's when you get top dollar. Uh, I, this is interesting because Xenoblade you know, Chronicles has never really gotten, in my opinion fair treatment from Nintendo compared to their other games. I can't think of any other game right now that is out of print from Nintendo from the first year of Switch. You can still go on Amazon right now and get 
1-2 Switch, a game that is significantly less popular. And you can get that brand new at MSRP prices or, you know, with a few bucks knocked off through Amazon. Like, that game is readily available at all retailers. It hasn't gone out of print and it hasn't gone out of stock. Now, obviously, there's higher demand for Xenoblade Chronicles and the Pyra and Mithra DLC is why the game sold out. I mean, there's people who just bought Xenoblade Chronicles 2 last year for like 30 bucks at Walmart, for crying out loud. They were chopping prices because they couldn't sell them. And then Pyra and Mithra hit and demand skyrocketed. Now, yeah... Sure, the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is also seeing more digital sales because of the Pyra Mithra release. And obviously, Smash Bros. Ultimate is proving that when you add a character to it, it increases people's interest in purchasing the games that character is related to because they want more history or more background on that character if they think that character looks cool. I fully believe when Banjo and Kazooie was added to the game, if there would have been a remastered you know, release by Microsoft even on Xbox for Banjo and Kazooie... You you know, the first game, I bet you it would have soared in sales the moment that Banjo-Kazooie was released for Smash Bros. So, again, this is just, I, I don't know why Nintendo uh, gives Xenoblade Chronicles this treatment where they they always go to print. I know it's less of an issue today because, yeah, it's out of print, but you can still buy the game digitally, so they're still technically selling the game. But when you see Nintendo cut physical copies. It's always Monolith Soft here that's getting the shot. I'm not saying that's the only game Nintendo has obviously ever gone out of print with early on. Uh, they've d they have done it with other games before, but we had this issue back in the day with the original Xenoblade Chronicles. Not only did they stop printing copies of the game while it was selling out, mind you, they only released it to a single retailer. So Xenoblade Chronicles was not only factually selling out at retail, and the only retailer uh, it was available at was Game stop they chose to only give it to one retailer so it was really dumb it's like they went out of print intentional to drive up demand maybe I, I don't even know because digital sales weren't really even a thing back then at least not for the big games out there like um we people weren't like digitally i don't even think it was possible to digitally buy xenomic chronicles back then physical was it so they're doing it again. Like I'm not saying that Xenoblade Chronicles 2, you know, is as evergreen of a title as other things. Clearly, it's not. Just like Arms is not. But I mean, I'm pretty sure. Like I'm, I'm just gonna go, you know, glance at Amazon, and sure enough, there's Arms at MSRP. That's still there, and that's sold roughly the same. I, I don't really understand why Monolith Soft is always the company that gets the shaft and gets these these, you know. Uh, these out of stock and, and lack of printing for Xenoblade. Um, and again, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is excellent. It's probably by far the best Xenoblade game. I know that some people obviously prefer the first one. Um, different story, slightly different gameplay, all that. I understand that, but this isn't really a debate over which one's better. This is just pointing out that, one, if you have a physical copy of Xenoblade Chronicles 2, uh, yeah, if you need a quick buck, I guess go sell it. Uh, the price has recently spiked. You know, the, 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 the going rate for it was literally, you know, what, just, just the cartridge, you know, looking back was like 30 bucks, you know, a, a month or two ago. Uh, but it, it, it's been shooting up because it's sold out and there's no more copies coming. According uh, to people who are working retail, there's no new, new units being shipped. There's nothing coming. So, again, if you have a copy of either one and you need a quick buck, go ahead and, and trade it. I don't know if the market's going to stay this high. Obviously, there's a chance that Nintendo could decide later this year to print more of them. Uh, right now, it doesn't look like that, that that's going to happen. Uh, Nintendo didn't do it with Xenoblade Chronicles, so why the hell would they do it with Xenoblade Chronicles 2? But you never know. If Nintendo does decide to do a reprint, then your version will be worth less money. So if you need a quick buck, take advantage of it now. Or, hey, if you think it's going to not be reprinted for a while, hold on to it and see if this value can keep spiking up as Switch becomes more and more popular. Although I will say, obviously, demand for the game right now is higher than it might be in like a year. That's something to take into consideration as well because demand also sets the market price. So the more in demand something is and the more scarce it is, the, the higher price is going to be in. And if demand goes down with the further we get away from the Pyra and Mithra DLC, well, there you have it. Um, obviously, the price will come back down a little bit. But anyways, I just wanted to let you guys know if you need some money, go for it. And I wanted to also say Nintendo, come on, man. Come on, man. I know you guys have had it forever to buy this, but... I always say this when people talk about how it doesn't matter 
when games are no longer uh, in stock and no longer being printed if they've been out a while. Uh, people have been saying this about Super Mario 3D All-Stars. I'm going to tell you why it matters when the physical stuff, and 3D All-Stars is worse because they got rid of digital as well, but I'm going to tell you why it matters because there's still people getting Switches for their first time today. Every single day, tons of Switches. I don't know. I was about to say millions. It's not millions, but every single day, thousands. I think I can safely say that worldwide. Thousands of Switches every single day are sold to consumers who got their Switch just now for the first time. Period. Right? You can argue they should have bought it sooner. Maybe they couldn't financially purchase it then. Maybe they were between jobs. I don't want to judge people for when they're able to pick up systems because of various reasons affecting their lives. Maybe they weren't interested with it then, and they are now. Whatever the case might be, there are brand new people experiencing Switch for the first time every day day so for them to not have the same options to purchase these physical games as i got just because i owned a switch before they did ah, man stupid stupid i'm not saying that nintendo should start printing off millions of copies of xenoblade chronicles 2 no but they should at least allow uh you know retailers to order a handful of copies in and then print to order I don't, I don't know why that's such a big deal for Nintendo, but apparently it is. So, anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Sorry I'm not on camera today. And, again, I know it's been a few days. This video is going up super late. It is what it is, folks. I'm doing the best I can over here. I've got a very hectic life here. College, all that jazz, job, lots of crazy stuff going on. But... There's more videos in store uh, moving forward, more rumors, more reports, more. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, I, I got some really cool uh, upcoming videos, uh, specifically one I'm super excited about that I spent my own money and everything on, on um, a, a pretty expensive, one of the most expensive accessories for Nintendo Switch that exist on the market uh, that I, I, I can't wait to, uh, to take a first look at and see how it compares. Also, uh, there's also a company who recently contacted me for what is one of the weirdest um, docs I have seen, uh, they're, they're, a, a new dock for Nintendo Switch that they claim has 4K output. No, this is not Switch Pro. This is a third-party thing. So the closest I can think of is an M Classic like upscaling. You guys know what the M Classic cable is, but not that, or, or like they put it in a, in a dock. I, I don't really know, but they keep telling me in email, oh, yeah, it all puts at 4K or obviously upscales at 4K or whatever. I don't know. I'm very curious to see if it actually makes any difference. It also has one of those cooling fans, which that's usually a red flag because the cooling fans typically don't make any difference. Uh, but, hey, you never know. I mean, maybe it does. The Switch does get pretty warm to the touch on the back and docked mode, you know. So maybe, maybe. Uh, it'll help keep the, at least the outside cool. But anyways, uh, I'll let you guys know when those videos are ready to come. I'm still waiting on some of these products to arrive and, and, and do my little testing. So I'll catch you guys in the next video.